Hi everyone! In this tutorial, I'll show you how to create a one-of-a-kind home decor wooden plaque. I'll give you tips on how to give the text a burned into the wood effect, and I'll walk you through the process of using laminate to sublimate the image onto the wood. So let's go ahead and get started. So for today's tutorial, I'll be using the latest version of Photoshop CC. This just happens to be 2020. And I've got a blank document set up. It's 11 by 8.5 inches, 300 dpi with a white background. Now Photoshop has added this great feature or just enhanced this feature about removing the background from a photograph. So I'm going to share with you this tip um, that I find extremely helpful. The plaque that I'll be using, I went ahead and scanned it in. I have the Epson Workforce 7720, so I just put it on the scanner, scanned it in, and it did a great job of capturing the image, but I'd like to go ahead and remove all this white and shadows. So the way to do that in Photoshop is just unlock the, the file, and you can see it says remove background. So I'll click on that. Now this is not a complicated background, so it should do a very good job of removing all that excess glare and white, which it did. You can see that it's done a great job right here. But I still need to shrink it up, you know, get rid of all this excess page size right here. So while that layer is still selected, I'm going to go up to image and hit trim and select top left pixel color, click OK and that sizes it down. Now I did measure the plaque with a ruler and the scanner did a fantastic job of maintaining that size. So the width is 4.84 inches by 7.56. So that's fantastic. So now I'm just going to say file, save as, I'll give this a name. And I'm going to save it as a PNG file. I'm going to click Save, and this should appear in my folder over here. So now that I'm done with this image, I'll just close this file, and then we'll go back to the, the main design. So the way you could do this, you could simply just draw a rectangle that is the dimensions of the wooden plaque. But if you're like me and you like you know a nice visual reference, I find this very helpful just to design on top of this plaque. So I'm going to pull it onto my sheet here, and I know that it's the correct size. So now that I've got that in place, I'm simply going to drag and drop the graphic that I'll be using. And I have, I purchased this one from designbundles.net. I'm going to size this down to about, I think three and a half works pretty good. And I'm going to put it towards the bottom of the plaque because I plan on just embellishing this top half with some silk flowers ribbon. I'm not quite sure yet, but I, I want to leave some space up there. Now this looks good as is, but what I would like to do is go ahead and make this image look like it has been burned or engraved into the wood. So let me show you how to do that in the effects panel. So I've got the image selected. I'm going to double click to the right of the layer and this brings up the Layer Styles panel. I'm going to click on Bevel and Emboss, and I'll reset to the defaults so you can see the steps that I went through here. Now you can just use these as a baseline and obviously you can adjust them to your taste. So I'm going to leave it at Inner Bevel. I'm going to change Smooth to Chisel Hard. I'm going to make the depth 160. And the very important one, direction should be down. I want the size to be 20. I'll leave soften at zero. I'll change the angle to 120. And then I'll leave all this the same. And then under screen, I'm going to change this to color burn. And then everything else, I'll leave these settings right here. Then I'm going to go over and select inner shadow. Then I'll click OK. So you can see our image has changed quite a bit. So let me take, uh, switch this eyeball off and you can see what it looked like originally. And now with those effects, 
it gives the illusion that it is embedded into the wood. So I think that looks pretty nice. So I'm going to stick with those settings. Now with this plaque, I've decided, I think I'll go ahead and put a print on each side. So this page works out great because I can get two prints on a, a single sheet of eight and a half by 11 paper. So I'm just going to click on the plaque on my keyboard, hit control and the letter J that will duplicate the layer. Then I'm going to drag and drop another image. I'll place this one on the plaque and I'm not going to, um, you know, use the same embossing effects onto this image. I'm just going to leave that as a flat image. So my intention here is to use one for Halloween for a few days and then just flip it over and go back into fall mode. So I think that should work out pretty good. Now, obviously we're not going to print with these plaques on, but what I do need is some kind of a marker or reference line to line up my image with the plaque. So what I'm going to do is just draw a rectangle that is a quarter inch larger than this plaque. To make the math easy, I'm going to say that the actual plaque size is 4.75 inches by seven and a half inches. So my rectangle will be a quarter inch bigger than that dimension. I'll go over to my drawing tool and I'll select the rectangle and I'm just going to freely draw this on here. Then I'll go over to the properties tab and it's set for pixels, but I, I'll change this to inches. So for the width, I'm going to change this to five inches. And for the height, I'm going to do 7.75 inches. And then I'm going to say no color fill and for the line, I'm going to make that black and I'll make it one millimeter. Okay, so now I've got a perfect rectangle to put around my image. So you can see when we go to line this up, that when I place the plaque down, this is how it's all going to line up, okay? So I'm just going to click on that again and control and the letter J to duplicate it. Drag this over to my other design and place that right there. So that all looks good. So all I need to do now is remove those plaques and I'm just going to click on the eyeball to remove them so that way they will not print. And now our images are ready to be sent to the printer. So I'll just go up to file, select print, I've got the Epson Workforce 7720 that has been converted for sublimation printing. I'll choose print settings. And I have a profile already set up for this. If you're interested in learning how to do that, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner and you can watch that video. Then I'm going to click OK. Then I'm going to click print and we should get a preview from Epson here. All right, and as part of that preview, I had told it to mirror the image because I sometimes forget to do that. So this is kind of a helpful thing having a profile. So this is all set to go. So let me send this off to the printer and then we'll move on to the next step. So for today's project, I'll be using this plaque that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. It measures approximately 4.75 inches by seven and a half inches. And I think I really like this shape and I think it would be great to use either portrait or landscape style. So first thing you'll need to do is just give it a wipe with a cloth or uh, a lint roller and get any dirt or grime off of there. And I'll do that off camera. I just don't happen to have one with me. And then for the laminate part of this project, I'll be using the Scotch thermal laminate pouches. Now it is important that these are thermal. They must be heat activated. You only need half of the pouch. So this is great news. So if you purchased 100 of these and then you cut them in half, you have 200. So you can see here that opens up and it's a, it's a pouch and does have a seam at the top. 
So I'm just going to cut that seam away and that way I can separate the pieces. Now it's important that you know which side is which. There's a glossy side and there's a textured side. So the textured side is the one that will laminate towards the wood. So place that on top of the wood and the glossy side will be facing up. I'm going to laminate both sides of this shape or this wooden plaque and then you'll see what I'm going to do with it in the next step. So now I'm out at my heat press and I have it preheated to 360 degrees and 120 seconds. So to mimic a pressing pillow, I have folded over a towel, just that will be the cushion part. Then I've layered on a piece of ironing board material. You can purchase that at Joann's or any fabric store. And then this is important. You need a piece of parchment paper. And this will help um, you know, when you put the plaque on top here, then you put that laminate face down. It's going to adhere to the wood, but you do not want it to adhere to the, the fabric. If it adheres to the parchment paper, you can easily remove that. Then I'm going to top this off with a piece of paper that I had folded a couple of times, so it'd be the equivalent to four sheets. And then I'm going to press that at medium to firm pressure for 120 seconds at 360 degrees. So you can see that that laminate has adhered beautifully to the plaque and you can see that color change. It's just deepened up a little bit. And how easy does that pull away from the parchment paper? So that's a nice tip right there. So while I've got the heat press on, I'm going to go ahead and laminate the other side of the plaque. And again, that will be 360 degrees Fahrenheit for 120 seconds. Got my gloves on this time. This will be very hot because the other side didn't really cool down that much. So I'm going to be very careful as I pull this away. And there you go. So both sides of the plaque have been laminated and this is now ready for or ready to accept the sublimation print. So the next step is to go ahead and remove all the excess laminate. So I've got um, a craft mat here and I'll be using a combination of a craft knife and also a small pair of scissors because that little design that's in the middle you know of each line there that was really difficult to get around with the craft knife and I also found that sometimes the craft knife would cut into the wood because it's just I think plywood that's been stacked up on top of each other to give it that thickness. So here's the images that I went ahead and printed out and you can see we've got those rectangles around there and you'll see how this plays into um, helping align the plaque to the sublimation image. Got my heat tape here and 
and I'm going to put the plaque on top of that. Now I know that doesn't look like it's lined up, but that's just more of a camera thing right now. I can tell you that it is. So I'm going to just secure that with a couple of pieces of heat tape and then I'll take this off to the heat press. So I've still got my towel and the ironing board material done. Then I'm going to put the uh, parchment paper and then the plaque will go down next with the print up. Now I'm going to keep the temperature the same. I'm going to leave it at 360 degrees but I'm only going to press this for 60 seconds. Now this worked out very well for me. You may want to have a peek at your image before you remove it. You may need a little bit more time. It's going to depend on your heat press. And there we go. That image came out great. And look at that. It does kind of have the illusion that it has been burned into the wood. Now I did let this cool down for a few minutes because you obviously don't want to put a print onto a hot substrate. So I let that cool down maybe 10 minutes and then I went ahead and sublimated that Halloween design onto the other side. So what do you think of these? I think they look pretty cute. Now the plaque is completely cooled down, so let's take a closer look. I think this looks really nice. It's got that nice, you know, honey blonde or, you know, gold tone to it. And that image does look like it's been burned into the wood. So now what I plan to do is put the Halloween one up for a couple of days or maybe a week. We'll see. And then once that holiday's over, I'm just simply going to turn it over and then we can be back in the fall mode. So I hope you've enjoyed this project. If you haven't already subscribed, I hope you choose to do so. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos and give me a thumbs up. So thanks for watching and have a great day.